Hey guys, it's Mandels, here to ask which Generation 2 Pokémon are the most overpowered. That's right, it's time to talk about my personal favorite, it's Johto time! If you tuned in last time, you'll know that we talked about the overpowered Pokémon of Generation 1, but if you didn't, click Brock's marvelous drying pan to catch up with the details. Come on. I know you want to. But anyways, as I was saying, now we'll be discussing the Pokémon of Johto. And disclaimer, I've decided to only talk about the Pokémon that were new to the generation, and only about how they performed when they were newly released. This is because otherwise, if I keep making these lists, we're just gonna be waist-deep in legendaries by the end of all this. And since I don't want this to be a which legendary is the best contest, I feel like it'll be best to make the videos this way. Anyways, Generation 2 fixed a lot of problems that were wrong with Generation 1, but will it be enough to thin out the amount of OP Pokémon Pokemon this time around. Let's find out. Number 10, Mizdravis. One thing you should probably know before we get too into this is that Generation 2 is well known for being the most stall-oriented competitive gen. And what I mean by that is that rather than overwhelming your foe with high amounts of attack in gold, silver, and crystal, damage was usually dealt slowly by defensive Pokemon using spikes, toxic, etc. In a nutshell, what you want to do is sit a fat-ass Pokemon down and wait. But what does this have to do with Mizdravis? Everything, practically. Mizdravis is the only Pokemon in these days to be fortunate enough to come equipped with Mean Look and and Perish Song. Perish Song isn't that great on its own since you can simply switch out before it does any harm, but when Mean Look is thrown into the equation, you can't switch out and are vulnerable to its deadly clutches. But wouldn't that mean Mizdravis is vulnerable to Perish Song too? Nope, just use Protect a few times and you'll be A-OK. -okay. Number 9, Heracross. Before this beast got a mega evolution, he ran rampant in gold, silver, and crystal as debatably the best fighting type in the game. And he's a bug. You ever get punched in the face by a bug? Not till Heracross, baby, and by god is it insulting. And while he's one of the best fighting types in the game, he also deserves the title of best bug type as well, mostly because of... Mega Horn! Let's get real. In Gen 1, bug types had nothing. In Gen 2, well, this kinda still remains true. Bug types have got Pin Missile, and yeah, that's about it. But not Heracross. He's the only Pokemon in the game that came equipped with Stab Megahorn, which is something that finally gave the previously overpowered Psychic types a well-deserved run for their money. Sure, the guy is weak to Psychic, but he at least has a chance to hold his own. And finally, Heracross is a pretty resilient Pokemon, resisting some of the most common moves such as Earthquake, and you overall just can't go wrong with adding one to your team. Number 8, Blissey. Remember when I referred to Chansey as a quote-unquote blob of raw concentrated HP? Well, if not, drawing pan. Click that sh So, what happens when you take this hit point mass and give it an evolution? I don't know, you cry, I guess. A lot. You'd be hard pressed to take out this immense wall using special attacks exclusively. Blissey's HP is at absurdly high levels, and a high special defense seals the deal, allowing this Pokemon to sponge almost anything that comes its way. Now, I say almost because of how low this Pokemon's physical defense is. Low kick this thing, and it'll no doubt bite the dust. But honestly, that doesn't matter so long as you use Blissey wisely. Just don't switch into a fighting move, you dummy! If Blissey stays alive, you'll be honored with some great status moves such as Light Screen and Toxic. Lastly, Blissey acts as a great cleric since it has the ability to use Heal Bell. But like I said, don't tank physical attacks. Lissy is allergic to those. Number 7, Tyranitar. If you really want to talk about psychic types getting a nerf in Gen 2, you should direct your attention to none other than Tyranitar. And ultimately, he's pretty much just the solution to adding some bulk to your team since Tyranitar has fantastic defenses. He's immune to psychic attacks thanks to the newly added dark type and can tank pretty much anything else. And yeah, like I said, dark types were new so they didn't have a lot of moves to work with, but even Pursuit allowed Tyranitar to dish out great amounts of damage. That and punish any annoying switches your opponent tried to make. You can build Tyranitar bulky, hoping to to stall as a spike support with a few curses thrown into the mix, or just build him as an all-out attacker. Tyranitar has the stats to roll either way, and the fierce appearance to intimidate the crap out of your poor foe. Number 6, Skarmory. I for sure have to hand it to Tyranitar for being as bulky as it is, but when it really comes down to it, Skarmory is probably the best wall to have in gold, silver, and crystal, physically at least. There are for sure some Pokémon that top this guy when it comes to special defense. But with 9 resistances and 2 immunities, some would argue that Skarmory is all you need, baby. He's basically the equivalent of Blissey, only with high defense, not special defense. And in a meta where the key strategy usually involves some sort of stalling, this is an ideal feature to have. Curse was also a key move to have in most of these battles, which, hallelujah, Skarmory has access to. This allows the Pokémon to set up before taking a good amount of damage, and then drill peck everything to its heart's content. Skarmory can also force switches with Whirlwind, and as a nice finishing touch, its name means Sky Armory. Pure awesome. 
Number 5, Suicune. You know, for a mascot of an entire game, you'd hope that Suicune had something to deliver to the table. The Pokemon already has aesthetics, you got this magnificent flowing cape, giant forehead crystal, and... tentacles? I guess? The fact is, Suicune looks cool, but does he deliver in the battling department? Well, with no physical weakness and only an aversion to grass and electric types along with a base stat defense and special defense of 115, I'd say yes. Yes, he does. As probably the bulkiest of the legendary dog trio, Suicune fits right in with the stall until it's dead mindset. Particularly, the Pokemon is really good when paired with Pokemon with spikes. Suicune can force a switch with Roar, dealing damage, and throw a couple Toxics around as well. And it's not even like that's Suicune's only job. For the bulk that it has, the amount of damage it dishes out is incredibly admirable. Number 4, Raikou. Conversely, you can think of Raikou as the zappy offensive version of Suicune. Instead of waiting until hell freezes over for your opponent to die, Raikou says fuck that, dives headfirst into battle, and kills things as quickly as possible. Raikou isn't just a special attacking monster though. He also acts as a pretty useful utility Pokemon. Raikou can stop potential sweepers dead in their tracks by shutting them down with a roar. And while it doesn't tank quite as well as Suicune, Raikou holds a solid 100 base special defense and can fortify its physical defense using Reflect. And basically, as many of you know, a pure electric type only takes super effective hits from ground moves, which gives Raikou only one true weakness. Yes, Raikou does break away from the stall trend that we've been talking about all damn day, but the Pokemon has so many strong suits that stalling is irrelevant. There are virtually no reasons not to use this guy. Number 3, Celebi. Yeah, you'd probably expect a great chunk of legendaries on an overpowered Pokemon list, so here you go, another legendary! <laughs> Just like our good pal Mew, Celebi holds a 100 base stat total for all of its stats. And you know what that means, versatility for days, which is always a good thing to have when battling Pokemon. Celebi's typing further adds to its flexibility since the grass psychic type resists the ever-present and obnoxious earthquake. The Pokemon is overall just very good at staying alive, which again, is good sh if you don't die, you don't lose! Eureka! Celebi, when in a pinch, can use Recover to regain lost health, Heal Bell to fix statuses, and Leech Seed to sap health from the opponent. And last but not least, Celebi has a nice special attack that lets it utilize Stab, Psychic, and Giga Drain. Oh, and Giga Drain keeps the Pokémon alive even longer. To summarize, Celebi is good. Get you one. Number 2, Ho-Oh. Up next is the famous rainbow chicken that most of us could recognize a mile away. In fact, Ho-Oh is a Pokemon that is so cool that it appeared in the first episode of the anime, which was way before Gen 2 was announced. That and the Pokemon is on the box art, so it darn well better be good. Reputation aside, Ho-Oh is great at torching almost everything in the metagame. It's got good stats, which shouldn't come as a surprise, and some sexy moves to back it up. Specifically, Ho-Oh has Sacred Fire, which is just flat out amazing. 95% accuracy, 100 damage, and a 50% chance to burn is definitely a no brainer also, the rest of its move pool is so vast you'll have almost no trouble at all countering whatever comes your way. Thunderbolt, Shadow Ball, and Giga Drain are just a few moves expressing Ho-Oh's diversity. Oh, and Ho-Oh doesn't die. He's got them good defenses. And recover. The burb lives forever. Number 1, Lugia. Establishing if Lugia or Ho-Oh was the superior one was an insanely hard call to make, so try to understand that before claiming that Ho-Oh is way better. In fact, Game Freak did such a ludicrous job at making the two Pokemon balance that I'd say that they're almost at a tie. But if it's even by just the smallest fraction, I'm going to have to give this one to Lugia. Firstly, Lugia's defenses are better, which puts it ahead if you're going for a stall strategy. Also, its move pool is just as handy as Ho-Oh, so there's really no arguing there. Lugia does have inferior attack, but it can always be made better by setting up with Curse, something that can easily be done given the Pokemon's initial defense. If you feel that this is a cop-out and believe that Ho-Oh is the better legendary chicken, let me know why, because this certainly is up for discussion. Whether it's truly better or not, Lugia is undoubtedly an amazing Pokemon and absolutely dominates the Generation 2 metagame. Hey, thanks for watching, peeps! Fun fact, did you know I have a Twitter and Twitch account? If not, you should follow me on there and we'll have all sorts of adventures. Also, be sure to subscribe for more if you liked what you saw and you'll see even more of my silly videos. That's all for now. I'm Mandels, and until next time, peace.